What's up, my little pretties? It's your mistress, the Queen of Lions here, and welcome back to another episode of Shadows and Pretties. Now, today, um, this is episode 80, I believe, of Shadows and Pretties. And yeah, it is episode 80 of Shadows and Pretties, and today in this episode, I am going to be talking about another, well, you can definitely guess, another, um, well, TV show now, this TV show was, um, made in the 1990s, like, around 1995 and, and even the early 2000s. And this movie is, well, the, not movie, but this TV series is called Little Bear. Yes, it's the Maurice Sandak, uh, Little Bear. Now, Maurice Sandak was the author who wrote the, um, Little Bear books. So, this show was created based on the book series Little Bear. If you were a kid in the 90s, you probably have remembered, you know, watching this as a young kid. So, yeah, even though I was, I was a young kid and I watched Little Bear a lot back when I was, like, a really young kid. So, it's a Ch Canadian educational historical children's animated series. Now, since this show came out, it was Canadian, just like Big Comfy Couch was... I'm really glad that this, um, became, you know, a, a thing in this whole, whole, well, this movie. I'm really glad that this movie, not the movie, but, like, the show. I'm really glad the show did came out in the 90s. Like, if you were born in the 90s, you probably remembered watching this in your TV as a young kid. Like, I remember I did. I watched this back when I was, like, really little. And, you know, looking back at it now, I wish this show was still on TV. Maybe it was, is, but I really don't know. Marie Sandak, it was a pretty cool, um, offer for writing, well, Little Bear books. And, you know, I'm pretty sure he's still... So the the author of it, Marie Sandak, he was the one who made Little Bear. Unfortunately, he passed away sometime in 2012 at the age of 83. Rest in peace. Now, it is heard that he kind of had, um, stroke comp complications in his month before his birthday. So, let's get started with the TV show Little Bear. So, besides of it being an educational historical children's animated series based on the Little Bear series of books written by, well, Elise Holm de Merndak, but of course it was illustrated by Maurice Sandak. Maurice Sandak actually drew Little Bear. The program was originally produced for CBC in the United States, and the show debuted on Nickelodeon in 1995, and it aired on CBS from 2000 to 2001. Of course, there is the Little Bear movie, which was released in 2001, which is a um, direct-to-video DVD full-length film of Little Bear. So, I'm not going to explain the plot of every single episode, because one, that would take really too long, but of course, I could definitely say... That I'm just going to sit here and, you know, just go through, you know, certain episodes that, you know, involve certain things. So, it sets in the United States wilderness around the end of the 19th century. Which is the late, um, well, you could definitely say, I guess you could say around late, ni late 1899 or early 1990. I guess you, no, not 1990, 1900, around there. Where it's about Little Bear goes on exciting adventures and learns new things with his friends. Friends. He is a grizzly bear with Emily being a human girl, Duck being the duck, Hen being the hen, Cat the cat, an owl, and Mother Bear who is a homemaker who looks after Little Bear, while Father Bear, a fisher bear, would pretty much be typically be away on his trip ship fiction. So, surprisingly I'm gonna say... Little Bear is voiced by a female actress. If you guys want to know, know if that, know what, that, you are, feel free to look online. So, he's basically a grizzly bear who, cub, who lives in the forest with his family and friends. Throughout the series, he's grown somewhat as his voice is slightly deeper and rarely takes snaps at certain, in some episodes. He is the only character whose parents are shown for the exception of Duck's mother in one show who is a chicken. A little bear who lives in a wood plaster brick house as he always likes to kind of play and explore with his friends. His catchphrase is always, hmm, interesting. Of course, Emily, who is a seven-year-old girl who is little bear's best friend. In the summer, Vam Emily vacations with her parents by the river near little bear's home. 
and she carries a doll named Lucy, who is a porcelain doll. It grows very attached to her. Emily gives Little Bear Lucy when she has to go back to school, but then took her back, saying that she just remembered that Lucy has to go to school. So eventually, Emily eventually moves into the forest permanently and lives there with her grandmother in the, well, partway through the series. Owl, who is a male owl who is sometimes times very wise and very smart, even though he lives in a treehouse, and he's quite serious at times. Although he does enjoy fun and games, but he will only participate if the gameplay is sensible. It's shown in his reading thing as a hobby, for example. So, of course, we have Duck, who is a yellow, the old duck, who basically, you know, it lives in a nest by the pond. We have Cat, who is a laid-back, slothful male cat, who enjoys prowling at the night and plays tricks on passerby while eating. And when he and his friends must go on a certain place in the woods, Cat often leads them through with his shortcuts, as his catchphrase is boo, which basically scares people sometimes. Of course, we have Hen, who is voiced by, uh, well, Elizabeth Hanna, who is a fussy, feisty chicken who lives in a large chicken coop. She, of course, likes cleanness, and even though her nieces and nephews mess up her spotless house in one episode, she's still being shown to be an opera, but it seems that she's not good at singing it. Of course, we have Mother Bear, who happens to be... Little Bear's mother, who enjoys cooking and was always there to, well, help every Little Bear if he needs it. And of course we have Father Bear, who is Father Bear, Bear, who is Little Mother Bear's husband, and Little Bear's dad, who fishes and sometimes takes Little Bear out fishing, as he has many places and likes to keep things that are old, even if they're to be thrown away. So, of course they have some other characters like No Feet the Snake, Grandmother and Grandfather Bear, who is, um, Mother Bear's parents. Rusty Bear, who is Father Bear's younger brother. Although he does look big, big, like, than Father Bear. Of course, we have Granny, who is, well, Emily's grandmother. Tutu, who is Emily and Granny's dog. Mitzi, however, is a mischievous monkey. Of course, she's only appeared in a couple episodes. But she does not start appearing until the end of season two. Of course, we have Moose, who is a Eastern Moose, who sometimes helps Little Bear and friends that are in need. Of course, there are some other characters, like, for example, Pull, Frog, Mermaid, and a few episodes, and even Otters, and some other characters. Not really, you know, major characters, but they do appear at some times. So, anyways, I guess that with that being the case, with that being said, I am gonna sit there and get started. So, of course, the film was made in 2000. Cine 1 was the adapt film direct to video, video film by Paramount Home Entertainment and Nevada titled The Little Bear Movie, which that ends up being the case. In Canada, Little Bear was adapted into a live theatrical show, which is called Little Bear Winter Tales, which originally toured across Canada in 2000 and, well, well, seven, and returned in late 2009. Both tours were presented by Pat Puchun Entertainment, Pad Quinn Entertainment, and were produced by Cobra Entertainment. Of course, we have at least two educational games based on the Little Bear franchise, which is Little Bear and the Rainy Day Activities and Maurice Sandak's Little Bear Preschool Thinking Adventures. Of course, with that being said, there are many VHS tapes that involve, you know, Little Bear episodes that were basically in the sh in there, so... With VHSs of releasing of Little Bear from 1997 all the way to 2003, a lot of the VHSs were sold pretty much everywhere, as it was pretty popular. Of course, we have the DVD releases of Little Bear, which um, was released from 2002 to 2009. So, I guess I'm going to go through with episodes I teach. So, it's basically an educational show for any of you guys who wanted to know. So, first of all... Every single episode has three episodes in one. Like, it has three episodes in one ep- Three little episodes in one- In one episode. Like, a couple stories, actually. That's pretty interesting, to be completely honest. So, with that being said, the first episode has What Will Little Bear Wear, Hide and Seek, and Little Bear Goes to the Moon. So, it's basically whenever Little Bear has, you know, certain- when it has him focus on certain episodes, it usually helps helps little bear bear you know teach kids certain things like 
how, what kids would wear if they want to go outside. I'd hide how people can help play hide and seek and help other people and even pretends. So Little Bear has like a very good imagination when it comes to these episodes. So in the second episode, we have Birthday Soup, which celebrates Little Bear's birthday. Polar Bear, where Little Bear gets covered in paint. And Gone Fishing is where Little Bear goes fishing with Owl. Of course, in the third episode, Up All Night, Little Bear's Bath and Father Bear Comes Home, is basically Lee, Lee about that was there, there are cover cable, well, systems on DirecTV. Up All Night was titled A Flu and Exploring, but it was never fixed. So that's a little error they just noticed that. So, of course, there are just some, you know, mix-ups here and there. So... Basically, the third episode involves, you know, Father Bear being out fishing and ends up coming home. And that's when we first see him with season, with episode three. The flu, exploring, and fishing with Father Bear, Bear eventually came out. And it basically talks about Little Bear getting sick and has to stay in bed. Exploring where he and his friend Duck and Cat go exploring. And of course, they end up dub fishing with father bear in one episode so of course the each episode which which involves you know learning certain things it teaches kids certain things of the subject matter that is in these episodes for example both little bear's wish shadow and little bear's shadow and present for mother bear each every episode has a little dull dull life lesson for kids to learn when as they get older to Grandmother's House, Grandmother Bear, and Mother Bear's Robin is where we meet gr meet Grandmother Bear and Grandfather Bear. And that's their first appearance was in Episode 6. In Episode 7, Hiccups, Date with Father Bear, and Pudding Hill basically ends up, ends up wanting to try to do things like it involves solving problems, blums when the show came out. It also features, you know, characters solving problems with one another. Yes, I'm repeating myself a few times, but I apologize. In episode 8, we have Little Bear's Mermaid, Father Bear's Fly in Flapjacks, and Maracas. One, the first episode, Little Bear's Mermaid, is the very first episode we see the mermaid character, although she's rarely in it. The next episode, episode 9, A Family Portrait, Little Bear's New Friend, in Emily's Visit, Emily's very first first appearance is in episode nine of well it, of little bear so that's when emily first joined in so of course we do have certain episodes that has you know one episode which is episode 10 where duck ends up having for mischievous duckings but of course when they go missing they have to go find them so when it comes to to mother bear preparing for her parents 50th marriage anniversary so they, Little Bear and his fans perform a band for the party, which is, of course, pretty interesting, interesting at the time. Because, you know, there is a lot of good concept when it comes to these episodes. The animation is, like, really good and hand-drawn. Like, I could really see about that. So, yeah. Of course, we also have one episode, but so where Emily ends up, ends up going to school. Which, of course, happened later on. So, when Little Bear and the Wind, it basically has, you know, teaching kids of, you know, not getting scared by storms. The Goblin story is where Little Bear and tells fibs to Grandfather Bear. And even in one episode where Little Bear is so interested in her, his little track that he tries to make. But, of course, he has to try to complete it before he falls asleep. Which, of course, it proves that he says he's not tired. When he clearly is. Grandfather's Attic, Little Bear's Egg, and Party at Owl's House. Each of these episodes has like a me and life lesson. So I'm not going to talk about too much about every episode. I'm just going to go with the episode's name. So that is episode 12. Episode 13 includes the Rain Dance Party, Your Friend Little Bear, and Fall Dream. Which basically has Emily, Emily going back to school in one episode. And then Emily comes over to visit for the weekend. Little Bear in, the, in episode 14, Little Bear the Magician, Dr. Little Bear, and Bigger Little Bear shows people of what they want to do when they grow up. Kind of teaches kids of what they careers they want to pick when they grow up. Although they don't really go into too much information or detail, 
But, of course, we can definitely say that. That it's just a very good, you know, lesson to teach kids of what choices they want to do and what careers they want to proceed into once they get older. So, eventually, we have episode 15, the final episode of season 1, which has Little Bear Trips to the Stars, Little Bear Surprise, and even Little Bear in the North Pole. Which, of course, eventually teaches kids about their adventures and what their, well, imagination can really do. Of course, in, in season two, lasted from 1996 all the way to 1997, which includes episode 16, which is Little Bear Meets No Feet, Camp Out, and Emily's Balloon, which this is the very first, well, in episode we see No Feet the Snake into it. Of course, later on we... In the episode 17, we have a few episodes called Cat Shortcut, Little Bear's Bad Day, and Captain Little Bear, which kind of teaches kids about, about what path to go to, about, you know, sometimes when things don't go right on your day, and etc. It does happen, but of course it teaches kids about what they can learn with their imagination of what they want to do. So... In episode 18, we have Building a House for Emily, Emily Returns, and Little Sherlock Bear, which basically is the episode where Emily returns for season 2. In episode 19, Little Bear's Tooth, Little Little Red Riding Hood, and even the Little Bear and the Cupcakes basically comes out with a very good, good storyline when it came to, you know, one involving a fairy tale. In episode 20, we have Snowball Fight, Winter Solstice, and Snowbound, which is a winter-related episode. episode. And of course, we also have another episode that talks about, well, well, certain or in subject matters when it came to, you know, certain concepts. In episode 12, we have an episode, well, 21, sorry about that. Little Bear's Garden, Prince Little Bear, and even Painting for Emily takes his place outside. Most of the time. In episode 22, Follow the Leader, Little Scarecrow Bear, and Little Bear and the Baby has, you know, certain things of how to, well, you could definitely say, hey, how to take care of certain things, how to, you know, oh no, go through something, and etc. Which, of course, it also talks, talks to kids about, you know, what to do with a, as a babysitter, and etc. And in episode 23, we have Rafting on the River, Little Bear's Kite, and Night of the Full Moon, which is really awesome, to be completely honest, as those episodes were pretty good. In episode 24, we have Auntie Hen, Play Ball, and Lucy's Okay, which kind of talks people about, about having funerals and how about, about when people die when some people have funerals, which, of course... This season really tackled that subject matter pretty well, especially with this. In episode 25, Between Friends, Blueberry Picnic, and even Lucy Needs a Friend, teaches kids that you should that making new friends could be very good, especially when, when it comes to being one person alone. But, you know, having friends could, is a, always a good thing. In episode 26, A Picnic on Pudding Hill, Little Bear's Walkabout, and Secret Friend, also talks to people about exchanging secrets and spending facts and stuff. Of course, with that said, episode 27 has about, you know, certain and stuff like Owl's Dilemma, School for Otters, and even Spring Cleaning, which is a springtime episode. In episode 28, we have the tale of a whale, Mitzi arrives, and Granny's old flying rug, and that's the very first episode we see Mitzi the eight. In 2000, in, well, in episode 29, we have Little Bear Sing the Song, A House for Mitzi, and Up in a Tree, which two episodes involving Mitzi were the last two episodes of the, of the season. Now, in season three, it lasted from 1997 all the way to 1998, which episode 30 includes the big, big bear sitter, the top of pudding of the world, and even the campfire, which talks about campfire stories and more adventures. Episode 31 talks about Mitzi's Little Monster, Simon Says, and Applesauce, which they in include really good educational things for kids. This show, on the other hand, is a very good educational show for younger kids if you 
have kids of your own or for kids in any age for that matter. In f in episode 32, we have Father Bear's Night Shirt, uh, How to Scare Ghosts and Search for Spring, which it clo calls about the winter and they want to predict that spring will be arriving in that. In Out of Honey, Message in a Bottle and Little Bear Sweet Tooth basically talks about about certain other subjects that have been happening. Like one focusing on little bears bears eating more more treats and gets a bellyache. And that's in episode 33. In episode 34, where Lucy went monster putting it under the covers. Which has has the episode episode was the, the concept about certain things like not in a good mood. Who'd having thing to look for someone who took in her and even then wakes up and thinking that they were bed bugs and etc. Episode 35 has gingerbread cookies, marbles, and garden war, while episode 36 has the red Fred, Princess Duck, and Little Bear Meets Duck. And Little Bear Meets Duck is the very first episode, well, that, well not very first episode, but it kind of explains how Duck and Little Bear first met when Duck was a lot younger than what she was today. For episode 47 includes Mother Nature, Dance Steps, and Who Am I? My, as we have 30, episode 38 with being Emily's Birthday, The Great Race, and A Circus for Tutu. Episode 39, we have Clever Cricket, Leaves, and Big Bad Broom. And we have a, followed by episode 40, which is Pillow Hill, Diva Hen, and Father Bear's Little Helper. Sometime in episode 41, we have I'll Be You and You'll Be Me, Frog in My Throat, and The Puddle Jumper. Followed by, we have episode 42, episode for, well, episode 42, called Family Bath Time, Winter Wonderland, and Mitzi's Mess. Now, unfortunately, in season 4, sometime in 1998 to 2000, after the season, Mitzi no longer becomes a major to roll after Goblin Knight and Duck Soup, which I don't get it why, and this is the last session for the for the 1993 Nick Jr. Productions logo. Go, and this is also the last season that they use a traditional CL animation, as the production began and ended in 1998. Episode 43 has Moonlight Cernade, Caterpillars, and Goblin Knight. Goblin Knight is the Halloween Ween special show, and it was pretty an interesting Halloween special, like the Winter Solstice one. Is basically like a Christmas special, while the old Goblin Knight is a Halloween special, which is pretty neat. Episode forty four has sleepover, Santa Castle, and Happy Anniversary, which talks about children having to celebrate, break, break the their parents' anniversary. Episode fifty forty five, which has April Fools, balloon heads, and even Finn Mother Bear's button. Episode 46 we have, which has the little bear in the ice boat, baby deer, and invisible little bear. Episode 47 has Valentine's Day, speaking of mother bear and I spy. Episode 48 it has blue feather, thunder monster, and duck soup. Unfortunately, in duck soup is the last episode um, Mitzi became a major character, Dirt, basically. In episode 49, we have Little White Skunk, Mother's Day, and Little Footprint. Which, of course, we have episode 50 having Fall Rainy Day Friends, Little Goblin Bear, and Picnic on the Moon. In episode 51, Little Bear and the Sea Monster there was another episode they have along with Hat Parade, Find a Fisherman Bear, with, season, with episode 52 having The Painting, The Kiss, and the wedding, which include, which talks about people, what they do is if they, they, they get married. Like when everybody gets, you know, about what people do when they fall in love and get married and etc. It's basically pretty interesting to be honest. Of course, we have the final episode, final season right here, which is episode well, season f five, which started in two thousand and one to two thousand and three. It's the only session to use the 1999 Nick Jr. Productions logo, but it's only the season to use digital ink and paint animation instead of hand-drawn. The first three episodes there on Nick started in around February of 2003, and Nogget began airing new episodes till the end of the series. 
as the production began and ended in 1999. In episode 50, 50, 53, we have certain stories such as Duck Loses Her Quack, Feathers in the Bunch, and Detective Little Bear, while we have 54 having The Sky is Falling, Father's Day, and Fisherman's Big Catch. We also have another episode which includes Lose a Father's Day special, which is Father's Day. A Father's Day special, show, as they had one for Mother's Day, they had that one for a Father's Day special. Episode 55 have The Dandelion Wish, The Broken Boat, and even Duck Takes the Cake. Followed by we have episode 56 of Magic Lemonade, Silly Billy, and Goodnight Little Bear. In episode 57, we have the first Frost, Hello Snow, and Duck in the Winter Moon, which talks about the first rival of winter and stuff like that. Episode 58 has Little Bear Talks to Himself, Who Do I Look Like, and Mr. Nobody. In episode 59, we have episodes such as I Can Do That, Pied Piper Little Bear, and The Big Swing. While we have episode 60 as the greatest snow in the show in the world, Lucky Little Bear, and Little Bear's Tall Tale. Episode 61 had Opposites Day, Wish Upon a Star, and even Sleepyhead Monster. In episode 62, we have Little Bear's Favorite Tree, Something Old and Something New, and In a Little While. In episode 53, we have We're Lost, Little Bear, Little Little Bear, Duck's Big Catch, while we ha we also have episode 64, which includes Little Bear Scares Everyone, The One That Got Away, and Where Little Bear's Crayons Went. And finally, we have the final episode of Little Bear, which is episode 65, called How to Love a Porcupine, A Houseboat for Duck, and even ha Little Bear Meets Owl, which is the final episode of the whole series. So in Little Bear Meets Owl, well... It basically tells Little Bear's story of how he met his meeting with Owl while looking at the moon and share their interests in the nighttime, which includes the reason how Little Bear came to be. Be with friends with, well, Owl. So, with that being the case, I am going to be talking about the movie. Not going to give out too many spoilers or anything because, well, one of them being, for any of you guys who have not seen the movie, I highly recommend you do. It is on YouTube, just so you know. And it's just really good concept for what it is. But, of course, with that being said, the Little Bear movie, some people say it's like the season finale of the show. I don't really know, to be completely honest. So, basically, this story has, you know, Little Bear and his friends talk about the wilderness. Theirness about, you know, about the wild and that. When all of a sudden, when Little Bear... Bear meets a, well, a little lion cub named, named Cub, who ends up getting lost and can't find his parents. So, this movie involves a villainous mountain lion named Trouble, who apparently was the one that, that Cub says that he's like a wild mountain lion. So, with that being the case, and with that being said, that well, little bear, there's friends, ended up having to take Cub to, you know, back to Little Bear's house, and they have to go f go all over the wilderness just to find Cub's parents, which this movie, TV movie of Little Bear is the very first Little Bear episode, well, the movie to have at least a new, you could definitely say a new, a villain. Like, this movie has, like, has a villain in Little Bear. Like, in the Little Bear series, we never have a villain at all or whatever it is. While we have some, you know... No, the movie, unfortunately the movie, to be completely honest, never had its soundtrack, which contains two pieces of unknown music of the soundtrack series. So the movie was released on VHS and even DVD sometime around 2001, and it was premiered and even nominated for Best Original Song on It's a Great Big World. Now, that's all I have to say about Little Bear. If you guys want to see the Little Bear, well, movies, or... If you want to see the episodes for yourself, feel free to look on the Wikipedia page as it can tell lots of information about the episodes and etc. So anyways, with that being the case, my little pretties, what did you guys think of the TV show Little Bear and what did you guys think about the Little Bear movie? Did you all enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what you have done person to help make these, this show a lot better and what would you have done to make the movie a lot better? 
Leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. And yes, I'm going to sit here and say this right now, that this is just my opinion on this TV show and movie. And if you happen to disagree with me, that's totally fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these, um, well, movies and TV shows. And this is just some of my own personal thoughts. And anyways, with that being the case, with that being said, um, if you have, well, I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Shadows and Pretties. I'm sorry I didn't go, I'm sorry if I went too fast for you guys. It's just, well, I just talk too fast and I'm trying not to talk as fast as I can. But, you know, it's hard for me not to. So, with that being the case, if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. And don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload because you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, I will be catching you all in the next video. So, yeah, peace out, everyone. And always, I'll see you all next time.